Hi folks, Astronomy Live here, with a brief reminder about the start of the next SDO eclipse season, which is a period of time each year where the Earth passes in front of the Sun from SDO's perspective, blocking it for a period of time each day, and these eclipse seasons occur twice a year. Now back on January 31st, I did some live tracking of SDO with my telescope, and using that data I solved the orbit of the spacecraft and made a prediction about when the next eclipse season would start, and I uploaded that video back on February 6th. Please see this video if you want all the details about these eclipse seasons. For example, why don't they occur in periods that are exactly six months apart? And in periods that are about six months apart, why is one period not occurring 12 hours different from another period? So if you want information about all that, you'll find it in this video, predicting the start of the next SDO eclipse season, on my channel, uploaded February 6th. But on this video, I just want to post a brief reminder that this is about to begin, because we're only a number of hours now from the start of the first eclipse of this eclipse season, and I also want to update the orbital elements that I calculated for the spacecraft. Last night, I performed a live webcast of Venus, and after I completed that webcast, I collected a few more observations of the SDO spacecraft using my telescope. And I've now astrometrically solved those images and plugged the data in to update the orbital elements that I've calculated for the spacecraft in order to confirm my previous prediction. So first up, for review, here's the astrometric data and resulting orbital elements based on the initial data I collected on the spacecraft, which you can see in the February 6th video. The astrometric data is in this table here. The time and position of SDO is listed, and then the resulting orbital elements that come from those observations are in TLE format here at the bottom. This is a standard format you can load into many different programs, but I've actually created a spreadsheet with which I can calculate the pixel coordinates predicted for Earth relative to the Sun from SDO's perspective and load into SA image DS9 to render a virtual view of what the eclipse should look like. And that's what you see in this animation here. The blue line represents the edge of the Earth's atmosphere, and you can see that it will partially cover the Sun uh, in a few hours from now on February 14th by universal time. Now, the extent to which it covers the Sun will depend greatly on the specific wavelength of light. Earth's atmosphere is extremely opaque to UV light, but the extent to which it is opaque depends on the exact wavelength. So, in different wavelengths, the Sun will look like it's covered up to different extents, even if images are taken simultaneously, due to the difference in how opaque Earth's atmosphere is to these different wavelengths. But this gives you a general idea of what the eclipse will look like, the motion it will have, and roughly how much of the Sun it will cover. Now, I've updated the orbital elements using observations I conducted last night after my webcast, and you can find those pictures and the new information here in this drop canvas link, which I'll include in the video description. Here are the images that I collected last night. You can see the coordinates of SDO in this bottom bar here, right ascension and declination. I astrometrically solved them at both the starting point and end point of the trails. This gives us the coordinates of SDO at the start and end of the exposures, respectively, as discussed in my previous video predicting the start of this eclipse season. You can see those images here, and then by loading these coordinates into uh, SatFit, I can fit the orbit to the new observations. And it doesn't change all that much. The orbital elements are very similar to what they were before. And as a result of that, the prediction remains the same. Here is what the updated orbit predicts for the start of this eclipse season. Again, the blue line represents the edge of Earth's atmosphere, and you can see it covers up most of the Sun here and then retre retreats back out. But again, the exact extent of how much of the Sun will be covered will depend on the wavelength that you're looking at. But this gives you a general idea of what this eclipse is going to look like. And it will start just a few hours from now, in the early morning hours, on February 14th. And you can see the time listed up here along with the pixel coordinates. These coordinates come from the spreadsheet that I created to uh, calculate the position of Earth relative to the Sun using the orbital elements of SDO that I calculated using my own observations. So this is not using NASA data. This is not NASA saying that this is going to happen. This is just based on my own observations of the spacecraft and the calculations derived from those observations. 
So you can plug in the time here and based on the size of the sun in the image it will calculate the uh, image scale and the position of Earth relative to the sun. You also need to enter the center of the sun's coordinates uh, here in these cells. And then you simply plug in the center of the Earth and its radius into SA image DS9 and that gives you this animation you see here. If you plot this over multiple points in time you can animate it and see how the eclipse should occur. And this is what I'm predicting will happen just a few hours from now. So after this eclipse happens we'll review the observations of the SDO spacecraft and compare it to my prediction. And if I'm right then that means it really is Earth passing in front of the Sun because how else could I possibly predict the start of this eclipse season? So in my next video we'll review the actual observations from the SDO spacecraft and see if an eclipse occurred as I predicted. If it did, that's going to leave a lot of channels with some explaining to do, because during the last SDO eclipse season, a number of channels on YouTube were claiming that this was an unusual event and that it couldn't possibly be due to the Earth passing in front of the Sun. So if my prediction pans out as correct, they're going to have to explain how I was able to predict that based entirely on my own observations of the spacecraft along with my calculations of where it should be in orbit around the Earth and where the Earth should be relative to the Sun from its perspective. That's going to put them in a very tight position, so either they ignore this event entirely, in which case it begs the question of why they're ignoring it since they paid such close attention to it last time, or they admit that I was right and concede that this is really just the Earth passing in front of the Sun. I doubt that will happen. So many, I suspect, will take option three, which is to simply continue to claim that it's an unusual event, even though I was able to predict it as entirely normal based on SDO's orbit. We'll see. Stay tuned. Until then, clear skies, folks.